Hey everybody, Mary Fran Bontempo here. And before we get started with this week's episode, did you know that Brilliantly Resilient can come directly to you? That's right, we have keynotes, programs, presentations, workshops, all available to companies, associations, conferences, and organizations, either virtually or live in person. So head on over to brilliantlyresilient.net at the speaking tab to find out more. And while you're there, you can also sign up for our weekly Brilliance Bit, which comes to you once a week directly to your inbox and has a bit of brilliance from this week's show and will keep you living in a brilliantly resilient mindset. Okay, let's get on with the show. Welcome to the Brilliantly Resilient Podcast. What's your train wreck? Everyone has one. The question is, are you going to live there or are you just visiting? Let's check in with Mary Fran and Kristen to learn how to come through not broken, but brilliant. Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Brilliantly Resilient Live. I am here with my Jenny from the Block buddy, who is not only a friend, but also brilliant. She is a PhD. She is a social media expert. She just put out a book on domestic violence. I mean, this woman is the whole package. And I am lucky enough to have her as a friend and today as a guest. So welcome, Jennifer Gardella, PhD. Wow, Mary Fran, thank you so much for having me and my brilliance on your show. Well, you are welcome. It's always a pleasure because our conversations, even after all this this time of being friends, always leave me with something interesting, something new to think about. And that's why I love having you on this show because there's you do that for an audience as well. So you and I were talking last week and we were talking about, and I'm going to say a lot of words that may be unfamiliar to people or the little acronyms or initials. And also we'll explain all that, but we were talking about AI and chat GPT. So let's just get started and you explain what those things mean to people and why we are talking about that in this moment. So the conversation actually was spinning because I was spinning because my, um, my, as you know, I'm going through a kitchen remodel, which we should have done a podcast every day about Jen and her kitchen remodel. It was, <laughs> it was both Jen hilarious and eye-opening. And the yeah. eye-opening part was how companies are treating customers and clients these days. And I got to tell you out there, guys, it's abysmal. If you're a CEO or a business owner and you ha- are using a chat GPT or AI to run your business or run your customer service, stop immediately. So artificial intelligence, AI, is a way that it, I'll just explain this in very simple terms, computers are trained to act like humans and do human-like tasks. ChatGPT is an AI writer, meaning you can ask ChatGPT to do certain things for you and it will spew out whatever you ask it. So you can say, please write a thousand word blog post on being resilient um, and include five prompts, include these words, reference this article. I mean, it can do that. I can't really reference articles, but it can give you the level of detail pumped out that you want. The problem is that ChatGPT, well, there's a lot of problems with it. Number one, it's not, we'll just use this in terms of Mary Fran. It's not as brilliant as Mary Fran is. (laughs) It's using language that is, I'm going to say fluffy and no one really talks like that language. Like like they, you know, they don't speak like that. That's number one. Number two, ChatGPT has a huge plagiarism problem that no one is really acknowledging. So if you want it to write an article, who's to say it's not going to write something painfully similar, if not identical for someone else with that topic. And it's not, authentic. And this is where I think my home remodel drives home this point. So (laughs) I got a new, so I I will also say that another um, word, technical word that we can use is chat bot. Uh, I thought chat GPT was Uh, the the hair on the back of my neck just stood up. (laughs) So chat bots should be taken down off of every single website. And here's why when you're, and there's a huge law firm that their marketing team just developed a chat bot and everyone's all excited. I'm like, it is the most 
inauthentic chatbot I have ever gone through in my life. They actually said, test out our chatbot. And I did. And I was like, oh my gosh, who put these things in here? But last week, my refrigerator started buzzing. So it was actually honking. And in order to get through service, either at the location that I purchased it or from the manufacturer, I had to go through either a chat bot or an automated phone system. And what you need to do is you can only get through if the automated system likes your model number, likes your serial number, and likes your reason for calling. So I guess no one previously had programmed the chatbot and the automated system to say what to do if someone says my refrigerator is honking. <laughs> so there's Jersey Gardella, as I like to, you know, you're about to throw your computer, your laptop, your phone right out the window, because that is literally what is going on. And it took an incredible amount of lying on my part to then get transferred to the wrong department because I just had to get the chatbot to agree that I needed help. And you and I were talking and I said, oh my gosh, where are we going with all this in the world? Like if yeah. this is the way I'm treated after buying a $2,000 refrigerator that after six weeks starts honking at me and I can't get service on the thing, yeah. then what are we doing here? Where are we like going? we've really lost our way. Yeah. So I guess the reason I wanted to talk to you was twofold. Number one, to 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 make that point to companies and and people who are using this as a tool now don't get me wrong i i understand that there's an inordinate amount of money that's likely spent on customer service and all that stuff but when you're not serving the customers it's not working number one um and number two as you said they are those things do not understand people because they're not people they're not they're not people so that's number 1 but then i also wanted us to then and we'll we'll pivot the conversation to this to talk to the smaller business people the entrepreneurs people who are using chat gpt exclusively and i'm going to say exclusively because you know i use it but you know i also use it in a particular way so i i want to i guess the theme of all of this is if you're a human and you're trying to reach other humans, you got to be human. <laughs> you have to be authentically human. So I'll give you a little bit of an example of when I used chat GPT and, yeah. you know, I use, you know, I'm a writer, so there's nothing worse for a writer than sitting, looking at either a blank computer screen or a piece of paper with, with a computer screen with that little stupid cursor saying write something you dummy so i will often use chat gpt to start the process of thinking yes right great idea but i don't use it to write the piece and one of the reasons is to your point about plagiarism Almost every time that I put something into chat GPT and give me an article or whatever, it starts out with the phrase in a world where blah, blah, blah. And I can't tell you how many times that's happened to me. And I look at it, I'm like, who would put this up? But people automatically trust it. So the trust issue for companies and individuals with the, this, this animal needs to be much more suspect. Right. And here's something that's interesting that I've watched because I've been in social media, blogging, newsletter writing now for 10 years. And there is a need on the part of inside marketing teams and marketers in general to be cutting edge. Here's the newest thing, right? Mm -hmm. So ChatGPT came on the market and it's, or, you know, came on the scene and it's no wonder why it's, um, it, it has to be, you have to be using ChatGPT or all your ChatGPT tools. Here's, here's how you can be writing blogs in three seconds. What people don't realize is that marketers ruin everything with this philosophy, right? They, and they, tr and I didn't coin that phrase. Um, I met a woman, I, I could find her name. I don't remember her name now, but I remember when TikTok uh, was just coming out and she goes, oh, marketers are going to ruin this. Like they ruin everything else. And I was like, Oh my gosh, you're so right. 
Marketers now are ruining customer service for the with the need to be cutting edge and mm. no one is pulling in the reins, right? And to your point, there's so many good uses for chat GPT. You want 10 blog articles written, you want SEO blog um, titles, get all of your ideas from chat GPT that you want. Chat GPT can outline blogs. It can, mm. um, all of that. You can find directions, I've heard people are finding, you know, I don't cook, even though I just put in this brand new kitchen. Um, <laughs> people are finding recipes with ChatGPT, but the idea is do not use it as an end all and be all. And do not believe that you can create all of your content for the year in two hours. Oh like, my gosh. People That's have lost crazy. their minds if they actually think that all of your content can be created in two hours and that that's even a good idea. Like, wait a minute, that seems a little too good to be true. So we're going to dial this back. I, I, I just talked to a guy who said that he wrote, his, he had ChatGPT write his grandniece a little story and he sent it to her. And I was like, ah, that's not from you. Right, exactly. Like, thanks, but no thanks. Why is that poignant? Exactly. Uh, you didn't write it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And just to just to touch back circle back to that point about you know creating content for an entire you know year or or even the next two months it takes out the reality because it's not real hence the word artificial intelligence it right. it eliminates the reality of what's happening in the world so if you want to be current and reach your customers where they are, you have to write in that time. Now, again, doesn't mean that you can't can't use this as a really, really effective tool. I mean, this thing has gotten me through a lot of writer's block. Sure. <clears throat> pardon, pardon me, moments. But you have to use it judiciously. And if you're going to reach people in real time, you have to be aware of what's going on in the world in real time. Like you can't put up a, a chat GPT article that's automatically scheduled when there's been, let's just say an earthquake in another part of the world that you're not even acknowledging. And you're writing something sunny about, or GPT is writing something sunny about whatever's going on. You, you have to recognize that the humanity cannot be taken out of your work, whether it's a company with customer service or whether it's an individual writing about their business. Excellent point. And I'll just take it two steps further. Number one, what did we learn through COVID? People are dying for connection. People don't even like Zoom networking groups. You know, I'm a little bit of a hermit. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, and I'm being forced out there in the world again. And I'm having a lot of fun doing that. That's that's fun. But people don't they want a human connection with something. And whether you're writing blog posts for your website or whether you're using chat, um, I'm sorry, uh, chat bot to communicate with your customers. We learned during COVID, the research has spoken that that's not how we should be communicating in the world. And the second thing is, and this, of course, I'm you know plugging my business here. Google has spoken. Google did a major, and I'm going to go right over Mary Fran's head right now. We're probably going to have to explain. <laughs> We're obviously very. I'm just different. saying, say all your smart stuff and then dial it back for me. So the Google algorithm has changed. Google just changed its algorithm in March, and that means that the way that Google displays information on the first page of Google search results when someone is looking for a business has completely changed because one of the major reasons the algorithm, they changed the algorithm is to identify and discount AI written content. Wow. They are claiming that this will change about 40% of search. Wow. Because, <laughs> because the internet is filled with garbage. And I'm sorry to be so blunt, but at here at Brilliantly Resilient, this is what we do, right, Mary Fran? Yes. We let's just are, tell it like it is. We call we, it like it is. If it's crap, we're going to say it's crap. <laughs> right. And so there is so much garbage out there on the internet. Marketers, again, have filled websites with so much garbage. You can't actually find good information on a website anymore. Hmm. 
you have to go through Google to search a website. I don't know if anyone's run up against that, but when you, I needed to do something with my bank and couldn't find it because there were so many bells and whistles built into the website now that I had to go through Google and say, hey, how do I do this on my bank website? Wow. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, the And I, you know, I do that all the time. You're exactly right about that. I do that all the time. So yeah. And so that's what Google has done. So if you have, and I, I said this a year ago when AI came out because, you know, I've been in this business a long time and I got in the business in 2011, 12, when Google went through an algorithm change and said, you can no longer have a little HTML website. We're wiping those off. You have to be blogging. You have to have a social pre presence. You have to have links, internal, external, all the links, right? And I said, Google did that years ago. It can do it again. And if you don't think that Google is watching your little individual website, you are sadly mistaken. Google is watching everybody. And in this algorithm update, I think it's going to be a good one and really bring to light that we are no longer tolerating garbage. So to those folks out there who who do not who are not writers and I, and I know how painful that can be because I've you know worked with a lot of people who are not writers and and don't feel confident in that um how so how can they use chat gpt which by the way for those people who don't know if you don't know what chat gpt is just just stick it in your browser just go chat gpt and it'll come up and it's it's a it's an artificial intelligence, as Jen said. It's a site where you just put in, here's what I want you to say, and it'll spit all this stuff out for you. And to that point, if you say, give me 10 more, it'll give you 10 more of the same kind of thing. So very useful. Right. To and it's very alluring, right? It's like, oh my gosh, I can write a blog post in three seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't do it that way start it. Let's just say, start it that way. Use that as a starting point. So, so then let's, let's let you take this a step further. If I use chat GPT as a starting point, how do I then personalize it? What can somebody do to make this human and, and still use like the, the, the structure that chat GPT gives you. And that's the way I look at it. It provides sure. me a structure. Yeah, and you're dead on, right? You can, like we already talked about, you can say to ChatGPT, give me a blog post on resilience with 10 points each outlined with two sentences. That's enough to get you started. You change, now if you're, so you can start it that way and then start writing your own little quips in. You may eliminate five of the ideas, whatever. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use it. It's your blog. Yes, that and that's been it. one of my favorite things to go through it and go, I don't like that. I don't so like there, that. Chat GPT. Get out the red pen, MFB. So <laughs> yeah, that's like one option. The other option is you can have it write a complete blog post for you. You then have to change 75 to 80% of it. So again, this is idea creation. This is not actual writing. And the... I do want to highlight this point also, and I, I will, we talk about headliner all the time. This is a good headliner one, right? If you are working with a marketing team that is putting content on your website for you, you need to make sure that they have a very strict AI policy, that they are not using it. Hmm. And you can also check AI, your, any, any content that you write or that is written for you with an AI content checker. So Google AI content checker. So wait, there oh, is I... a Google, there is a Google AI content checker? No, uh, no, Google it and a whole bunch of content checkers will come up. So oh, okay. um, you okay. then put the blog post into that website and it will identify if it's written by AI or not. Wow. Holy so stuff. this this is really important, right? So if it now I will caution you that when we write for SEO, sometimes my content hasn't passed muster. You know, because there's only so many different ways that you can say something. Right. And I'm like, and we all know I am not artificial. Yes. <laughs> I'm as, you know, I'm as authentic here. as you can get. But so you have to take it with a grain of salt. But this is what led me to realize that Google was going to be watching and could if if a computer can detect that it was written by AI, 
Google was going to be watching. So just check your stuff. And if you, if ChatGPT writes you a full blog post, put it into an AI checker. And sure enough, it will come back as 100% AI written. The tools are unbelievable for capture, for catching this. So I guess to get practical here, if you're going to use ChatGPT as, as, a, as a small business person, you need to go back to your business, your product, your whatever, and look at the way you describe it to people. Look at the way you feel about it. Look at the way it makes you feel. And let's let's throw that out in there. AI doesn't feel anything. <laughs> they don't feel anything because it's a computer. It doesn't feel anything. It's just like and a narcissist. <laughs> exactly. You know Couldn't about those, You know about narcissists. Couldn't so, help it. Sorry. AI. AI is not going to help you get the feeling the emotions the relationship that you are trying to build with your customers clients followers readers whatever because it's not you so you have to be be aware of putting your somehow inserting your feelings about it your emotion the way you want your customers your followers your readers to feel about this your brand Exactly. So your brand needs how to come do, through. How do they do that? How do they how do you look at an AI generated piece of content and then put your brand in there? What right. Do you so I think the first thing, and you made a good point before that one of us cut each other off. I don't know, it's probably me. Who knows? Right. Oh, so right. you need to change about 70% of the content. Okay. But to your point, a lot of people don't believe they are good writers. Let me be very, very clear. You're a good writer. Whoever is out there, list all the hundreds of thousands of people that are going to download this episode. You are a great writer. You are a phenomenal writer. You are also the greatest center brand piece of your business. And you are the one that knows your ideal clients. So just Bring remember this that. Down because this is the key of this. This is the key of this. Say that again. Right. You are the greatest center what did you say the you're greatest? the center of your brand as a small business owner it's your ship which means you are the best one to write for it now what we get into and why my business exists is because you don't have the time when i deal with divorce attorneys when i deal with business owners we want to make sure that they're not blogging right they are building their business they're working on their business not in their business but with enough communication with a good marketing person like Ma, you can <laughs> pass along and the marketing person does the research then to be able to communicate your brand as well as you can. And then you should be able to then edit it to stay even more on brand. And that should be your place with ChatGPT. So when you, if you are going to use ChatGPT for the ideas, you then are going to have to do some writing. And if you're already, it's like when I teach statistics, it's a hobby of mine. I actually teach at college. Who, I, who has a hobby of teaching statistics? I don't know how, I just don't get it. I don't, I don't get a lot about you, but that's okay. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, join the club. So um, my point is kids walk into my class at the beginning of the semester. And what do they, first thing they say, white knuckled. I've failed this class before. I hate math. If you go in with the idea that you're not going to do well and that you're not a good writer, guess what? You're going to rely on ChatGPT and put garbage on your website. But if you do your keyword research, if you know your ideal client's pain points, if you use ChatGPT responsibly and you, for ideas and to back you up, and then you commit to editing it for an hour, you've probably solved your problem of creating, and now you are creating authentic content for your business. But you I have to listen. That whole phrase, just that whole phrase of use it responsibly and commit to editing it for an hour. One that hour. right there, yeah, that right there is is a is a strategy, a method, a you know, a, a one hour, an outline for how to use this. Right, and that's all you need to do. You need to spend about an hour a day getting all this stuff together. Now, again, can you, here's the other thing that you can tell with ChatGPT. A lot of people are using it for Instagram. 
engagement on other platforms has plummeted recently, Instagram is still cooking along. Engagement is plummeting, but ChatGPT puts these really silly little um, emojis throughout whenever you write it on Instagram mm -hmm. that you can just tell it's yeah. inauthentic. And so you can tell the authentic content from the chat GPT content. And again, I would just caution, I don't have a crystal ball about a lot of things in life. If I did, life would be very different, but I do not. <laughs> but one thing that I know is I trust my gut. I trusted my gut a year ago when this came out because originally I was dazzled. Mm -hmm. Who wouldn't be? Oh my right. gosh. I mean, I have how many clients we write, how my team and I write how many blogs every month? This could, right. this could, this could really reduce our payroll. I mean, <laughs> I look like, don't worry, guys. I'm not, we're not going anywhere. This steering the ship. But yeah, and anything that's this good is truly too good to be true. Much like a narcissist as well. Yeah, there you go. Bring it all around. <laughs> Bring it all back. Bring it all back to your other Sorry. brilliance. <laughs> so, you 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 said a couple of things um, that really resonate, and and I think one of them is you said something about you, you are your brand and you know, your ideal client. So to me, to, to put this in terms of someone who, you know, doesn't know all the ins and outs and, and, and the algorithms and all that stuff, which is really important to be aware of. And to your point about the emojis, if you wouldn't say it that way, don't let chat GPT say it that way for you. Right. Because anybody who would see a post from me that has 8,000 little emojis in it would know I didn't write it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's not from her. And if somebody's going to look at something that you've put on content wise and immediately say they didn't write this, that is a trust level. And your business ultimately is built on trust. Right. Excellent point. And now I will say this, one thing that's really interesting about what's going on in the AI world is AI image creation. Oh, good Lord. Now we're doing that. Nothing's so, real anymore, people. <laughs> Nothing is real. <laughs> so, you know, to your point of trust, that is actually something we haven't talked about. That's a great point. Like people need to trust that you're the one saying what you're saying. Hmm. But I will say that the images that AI creates are pretty cool. Now, what you, I, I'm, this is your legal disclaimer from a non-attorney, right? I am not an attorney. So let me just make that very clear. You cannot at all use an AI image creator to create a picture of something that you claim is your product. That's called fraud. <laughs> Plain and simple. And people have been sued already for that. But with some of my clients, we don't want the hell of having to create an image. So we have AI create some pretty cool images. In fact, one of my students, because right now I'm teaching an entrepreneurship class, one of my students is doing um, science kits. And we wanted, you know, and she sends you the science kit in the mail. And we wanted like a box with an exploding like science thing coming out of it. Well, we're not going to do, we're not going to hire, um, you know, a artist to create that. We're not going to, uh, and it was, it's so obvious that it's not hers. Right. right. No one would believe that everything could explode out of the box, but it's a super awesome image for her business. Right. So use it for that. But again, to go back to Mary Fran's point, you really need to develop that trust factor and do not let your ideal client even for once um, question your trust, question the trust they should have in you. Cause there's a thousand other people that they could go to, to do what you do. Exactly. And that to me is what this comes back to. If you can't tell me what you do in your own words, and in a way that makes me want to trust you, then I'm not going to trust you. And, right. and, and let's swing this all the way back around to these corporations that are using these chat box. If you don't have the time after I paid you money to get somebody on the phone with me to help me with my problem, I will not buy from you again. Ever. No, I'm if done. You're, if the $2,000 refrigerator is buzzing and keeping me awake at night, like literally waking me up at night 
and your chatbot doesn't think that that's a problem and will not book service. I'm going, first of all, I'm going to lose, then I'm going all Jersey on you. Then it but, gets crazier. Yeah, but that is a complete lack of trust that you are on my side to help me with this item that is now in my house. And that's what we forget as well. We're dealing with people's lives here. We're dealing with either their livelihood and the way they run their business or their personal life, what's inside their home. And that all has to be built with trust. And again, we learned during COVID that that's what people want. But then that's not what we're giving them because to my point, marketers feel they need to be cutting edge and current and with the new big thing. And instead they're blowing it. You know, it's so funny that you that you talked about this as being something that's the cutting edge thing and everybody's get got to get on board and all this other stuff. I cannot tell you how many things, and, and I could probably go down the whole list and you would recognize every single one of them, that were the thing, and I can't even remember the names of half of them. Oh, I can. But go g- give me a list of things that were and are not, if you can think. Periscope? Yes. Um, Clubhouse? I was just going to say Clubhouse. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Somebody that I was working with told me I had to get a new phone, which I really did have to get a new phone because <laughs> my phone couldn't support Clubhouse. Do you know how many times I used Clubhouse? This many. Zero. None. None. And the whole right. world, when it came out, said you had to be on that. But to my point, who was telling us that we had to be on it? Marketers. Mm-hmm. Marketers who were all over Clubhouse, all over Periscope and Vine, like, oh my gosh, you have to be that. You have to do Vine. this. You have- that was the other and, one. And what people, and then especially small businesses aren't doing is they're taking their eye off the ball of marketing, which is to connect authentically with their ideal clients. So, so AI is your, the current shiny object. Yes, I think it's there's some longevity in it if it's yeah. you because it will refine and I think everyone will get on board with our plan of using it responsibly. <laughs> no, I think well I think you're right and I think that that right there is the key. Do not automatically jump into this stuff with both feet because it's going to change, it's going to evolve and you don't want to be so far into it that like you said Google starts like eliminating your content from search engines and all that kind of stuff. Approach this mm-hmm. thing you approach this thing, as you said, responsibly, which people, you know, let's face it, it's easy. Our lives are busy. Our lives are crazy. When somebody comes up with, especially for entrepreneurs, an easy way to do things that they don't like to do, the, uh, people are all over it. But it has to be approached with caution, with thought, and used responsibly. And for you corporations out there that are keep put keep putting me on with a chat bot, not that you care because I'm one person, but people are getting fed up. So well, you need to rethink that. And I will say this, one of the, um, it takes some time, but one of the things that I've started doing, you're going to think I'm crazy and you already think I'm crazy, but I have had some major missteps with this kitchen, even with my move, with my closing, right? Mm-hmm. And I go right to LinkedIn and I message the CEO of the company. Just want to let you know what's going on with the reason that you're paid $10 billion a year with your big fat SEO salary and you have a plane. (laughs) Like seriously, you're only in business because you sold me a refrigerator. Right. And you, no matter how diversified your company may be, you sell appliances. This is how you're treating people. And, and people need to, and, and these, the, the actual humans who still so far are in charge of these things, and let's be careful people, because if we don't watch ourselves, AI is going to be in charge of everything and we're not going to have a say about anything, right. but the actual humans who are in charge of these things need to know this stuff. So if you are absolutely out of your mind over a chat bot or a whatever, Hey, get on LinkedIn, send a message, send messages to the humans that this stuff is not working for you Um, and yeah and and recognize that it's also not going to work for your clients if you are a small business right if it doesn't work for you in your personal life why the heck do you think it's working for your clients that's a great point too yeah you know but again also and i caution everybody if the marketers are telling you this is the next hot thing and how you have to do it remember clubhouse 
<laughs> right? Because how many marketers made money off of, oh my gosh, you bought all my Periscope books. Now you can buy all my pamphlets on Clubhouse. Now, why do you think that they're promoting those platforms? It's just to sell you more stuff and take your eye off the prize of really strong keyword research, a really strong editorial calendar, blogs, and social media. That is what you need to be doing. You don't, the exception, of course, would be TikTok, but you can still make a splash on TikTok. Yeah. It's not too late there. Good for you for letting it get some traction first. Yeah, exactly. And and right? you can use those things. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there is absolutely a use for these things, but be responsible, people. That is a word that is far too lacking in our vocabularies these days across the board. Accountability. Yeah, where this stuff is concerned, be responsible. Well, as usual, this has been a fascinating and enlightening conversation. You always give me new things to think about. And I will say this truthfully, as many times as I have heard you speak in front of groups and all that, I always come away, and you and I talk all the time, but I always come away with insight into something. So thank you for this. This episode is going to go all over LinkedIn. Anybody who, who needs to know, because this is important stuff. Authentically. <laughs> yes, authentically all over LinkedIn. Um, tell everybody where they can find out more about you and what well, I've thanks. I've just gone through a little bit of a rebrand myself. So you can find if you're interested in social media services, the Gardella Group, thegardellagroup.com is there for you. I, in the coming weeks, it will be even further refined and filled with great information. And you can book a call with me now very easily, which you weren't able to do in the past because. All my automation was busted. So we've refined all that. Uh, and then if you're interested in talking or learning about my services when it comes to domestic violence awareness and speaking, that's at jennifergardella.com. And there you have it, folks. My brilliant friend, Dr. Jennifer Gardella, think about all this stuff. Remember it. Use these things responsibly. They can help you, but you got to think a little bit. That's something that it's trying to do for us, and it's not doing well. No, it's not. No, it's not. And if you still need a little bit more uh, brilliance in your life, head on over to brilliantlyresilient.net. You can sign up there for your brilliance bit, which will come to you weekly or every other week, depending on when I get it out to you. But it will get there. And, and I will be authentic. Uh, I have to. That's it. I'm authentic. It'll get there when it gets there. I can't, you know, this is how we do things here. So head on over there for that and check out our Facebook community so that you can also live a brilliantly resilient life. We'll see you next time on Brilliantly Resilient Live. Thanks for tuning in to the Brilliantly Resilient podcast. Join our Facebook group and follow us on YouTube to be inspired with tools to reset, rise, and reveal your brilliance.